Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm just quickly jumping in at the start here to let you guys know that I've just finished updating my Patreon page through which I'm now offering both guitar lessons and what I'm calling pedal board consultation sessions. For more information on both, you can head over to my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. But for those of you not on Patreon, you can also drop a comment below or shoot me a message on my Instagram where we can talk about organizing something outside of it as well. I'll also just say in advance that I really do appreciate the support and the consideration. Signing up for my Patreon and contributing through my virtual tip jar really does help support me, the channel, and keep things going. It means that I'm able to spend more time improving my content and putting together better videos for you guys. So I really couldn't do any of this without each and every one of you, and I just really felt the need to express my gratitude for that. So yeah, just a quick little update for you guys. Hopefully you're as excited about it as I am, but I will stop talking now so we can get on with the main video. So today I'm going to be recording my third installment of what I call my tentpole jams. A lot of you have subscribed in the recent month or so, so you probably won't have seen the previous videos, which you can find by clicking the pop-up now. But essentially what these are, are my quarterly progress reports of how I'm developing and improving in my playing over time. I do a single take of improvisation over the same backing track each time, with no practice runs beforehand or editing done afterwards, just one raw take. Before the solo, we'll look at how I prepare and what techniques I use to get ready. And afterwards, we'll break it all down, looking at what I've done successfully, as well as the areas that I need to focus on improving in future. Each section of the video is linked in the timestamps below, but otherwise let's just get into it. So my practice routine at the moment is built around eight different guitar essentials. Sight reading, theory, ear training, scales, chords, arpeggios, exercises, and techniques. And each day I practice four of these eight essentials for a total of 60 to 90 minutes, with 15 minutes for improvisation at the end of each practice session. We've also looked at a couple of different methods and techniques to practice outside of this on this channel. Playing melodically and memorably, playing over expanded scale positions, playing faster, more legato passages, and using intervals and permutations to create more interest in your playing. All of which I'm going to try and apply today in my improvising at one point or another. Now, when it comes to how I prepare for these solos, which is the same as how I approach improvising in general, I begin by running through my practice routine to make sure everything is warmed up and fresh in my mind. I then sit with the track to break it down, so key, changes, sections, etc., just to establish the analytics of what I can play and where, as well as the different shapes and patterns that I can use to different effect. After which, I simply sit back and lean into the mood and feel of the track. I pay particular attention to any melodies that come to mind or stand out, even singing them out loud to better develop the connection between what I'm hearing in my head and what I end up playing. All of which to get a feel for what it is that I want to say and what I want to contribute to the overall track through my solo. And when I feel I'm ready, when I feel like there's nothing else for me to process or integrate, I move on to recording the solo, which is exactly what we're going to do now. And just to remind you guys, this is the single, raw, unedited first take. I haven't done any practice runs beforehand, nor have I done any editing in the post-production. So let's see how it went.
So overall, this was far from my best solo. I like the first eight bars of the first verse section, which I thought were dynamic and smooth, as well as being nicely cohesive with the style of the overall track. The second eight bars were also good, and overall, I think this first section was really the standout of the entire solo. The chorus section is a mess in just about every way. You can see how I'm struggling to find my way through it and unlock something that suits. The opening of the second verse I thought was a nice callback to the first verse with that descending ghost bend. But while this section opens well, it quickly begins to spin its wheels and doesn't really go anywhere new or develop any new interest. And the final chorus is also just all over the place, same as the first. I've played over this track three times now and there's just something about that chorus section that I can't seem to crack or find a groove with, even though it really isn't that complex a track to begin with. In terms of how I went with everything I was trying to use and include in the solo, for playing melodically and memorably, I think I managed to achieve this in the first verse section, especially in those opening eight bars. But in regards to everything else, so expanded scale positions, uh, legato passages, intervals, permutations, I didn't use any of them anywhere. I just had that feeling of being behind the track and I never quite managed to get out in front of it. One interesting thing though that did stand out to me are the phrases that I tend to fall back on and play without realizing, usually when I'm around a very specific pentatonic position. The first being this kind of bending pattern. And the second being this hammer on pull off idea. And it's nice to be aware of these because instead of them coming out subconsciously, I can now recognize them and use them to affect in the right moments. So moving on, I have a lot to focus on, which is basically everything that I'm focusing on now anyways. What I've realized is that while it's good to practice exercises and positions and shapes, it's only half the battle. You also need to apply them, a 50-50 split, in a practical context because otherwise it ends up meaning nothing, which is what I've learned from today. And it's always good to know where you need to improve. <laughs> But that is about everything for today, guys. And as always, I hope that there was something useful for you in this video or something that you were able to learn from. If so, do let me know down below, but also let me know how you approach writing a solo or improvising, what techniques or methods that you use to prepare. Drop a comment below or shoot me a message over on my Instagram, which is linked in the description because I would genuinely love to hear from you. But otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for doing all the usual business to help support my channel and my videos. Uh, thanks for sticking around and I will see you guys in a bit.